Welcome back to Life is Strange. We've just left the Vortex Club end of the world party, where it looks like the world is indeed ending, what with uh, two moons and all that, and we're headed to the dorms to look for Nathan. Oh Christ, Nathan just texted me. He says there won't be any evidence left after he's done. Shit. We have to go to the junkyard right now. Oh, now I remember how we end up in the dark room. That's just bait to get us there, right? And then when we get there, Jefferson is there and injects... Injects at least Max with the sedative. I don't remember what happens with Chloe, though. I know that Chloe doesn't die, though. I mean, neither do we. around, Chloe. Right. Just get ready to use your rewind fast if Nathan tries to jump us. I think we get sedated before we can use it. Maybe we should have called the police. Max, when we catch Nathan, you better rewind so I can kill him over and over. Jesus, be quiet, okay? We have to be invisible. Over here, quick. Oh god, Max, look. She's still there. Don't look, Chloe. Oh no. Chloe! Look how what the fuck? And that's the end of the episode, I think. Yep. Okay, so once again, this is a replay, so... Or a, a replay through, rather, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the credits, even though I don't usually do that. So I think what happens... We go to the dark room, and then I think we have to, like, find that picture that we took with Warren right outside the Vortex Club party and go back in time and change the past to resurrect Chloe and all that, I, I think. Something like that. Okay, let's take a look at the decisions. So me and 57% of people accept Chloe's request. Me and 40% of people let Warren beat up Nathan. For me and 72% of people, no one got hurt in that encounter with Frank. Or at least we rewinded the getting hurt. Yeah, 6% of people actually just left him dead. I wonder how Frank would end up wounded, but not dead. Maybe if you don't have the pistol, she has a knife or something. Me and 19% of people, Victoria didn't believe your warning. Probably because we have been giving her shit the entire game and took her picture and all that and haven't expressed any sympathy towards her, pretty much. Yeah, probably that. 
Oh well, I don't think it actually matters. I hope it doesn't matter. Oh, what is this? Me and 55% of people let the blue jay die. What? What blue jay? I don't know where that even was. Me and 93% of people didn't disturb the bird's nest. Me and 46% of people found David's code. And me and 59% of people had Kate help us finding Nathan's room number. Me and 68% of people didn't motivate Daniel to attend the Vortex Club party. Oh, I didn't even talk with Daniel. They're the one who sketched us and put her sketch on Facebook. Me and 80% of people didn't leave a message on Warren Slate. Me and 35% of people figured out Nathan's pin code. Wait, 65% of people didn't figure out Nathan's pin code? I assumed you had to do that to progress in the game. You don't? Me and 77% of people helped Alyssa. Okay, let's go ahead and start the fifth and final episode. If I remember right, we gotta do a bunch of little things and rewind time a bunch of times to get through this, and I think David ends up coming here and saving us. I don't know if it's just because they had these coordinates somewhere, or I think it might be because if you remember when we first left for the farm, the, the farmhouse, Chloe left her computer open with that location on, and maybe David comes into her room and sees that. That'd be my guess, but yeah, I think David saves us. I don't remember anything that happened. This must be the same drug Nathan used on Kate. Oh shit, that's me. He took that shot last night. Finally, I'm free. Almost. Need something sharp. God, I 
don't remember anything that happened. I hate looking at myself like that. You'll pay for this, Jefferson. Oh, focus on the photo. I promised I would never go back in time like this again. But this is the only way. This angle highlights your purity, see? The slightly unconscious model is often the most open and honest. No vanity or posing, just pure expression. Oh Christ, look at that perfect face. Hold that stare there! Stay still! my shot but please don't worry we have all the time in the world for now I knew you were special the second I saw your first selfie yes I still hate that word but I love the purity of your own image not like Rachel who was always looking in the wrong places poor Rachel Let me try this angle. Don't move! Oh. <sighs> Much better. Thanks, Max. If only Nathan could see this setup. He tried so hard. But you can't just throw a few subjects around and expect a cohesive style or theme. But he had an eye for shadows, and an eye for a whole lot more, as his elite family will find out, along with Arcadia Bay. Nice. Good. Oh, those eyes. It's just too bad you're so goddamn nosy, Max. But this room is under 24-7 surveillance, so all I had to do was text you from Nathan's phone. And you fell right into my hands. You really should have focused on schoolwork, not private detecting with your little friend. Chloe. Chloe, right. Yeah, I'm sorry that I killed, that Nathan killed her in self-defense. But she had a troubled history, like most Arcadia Bay dropouts. Nobody will be surprised. Or care. Though I promise, people will care when you die tonight, Max. I wasn't lying when I said you have a gift. Okay. Now this looks good. Maybe a few more close-ups. Max, please do not move so much. I need you posed and framed my way. Maybe a new dose will calm you oh, down. No, no. Now don't move or this will hurt much. Stupid! Bitch! You just don't listen, do you? In fact, you never did hear much in my class. If you had, you might have seen all this coming. God damn, you are a fighter, though. I've had my eye on you, and I've noticed that you've been more fearless this week than maybe your whole life. No. Remember my number one rule. Always oh. take oh. the shot. I can't. 
can't believe that happened. So sick. Okay, so the tray has changed now. Changed a little bit now that we kicked it and knocked over the medicine. Wait. Jefferson couldn't handle stains on his photos. Good. Now I can use them. Whoa. I I'm definitely more awake in this photo. I could try this one. This might work. Please work. I'm getting some spectacular images here, Max. Yes, Victoria would kill to be in your place, but she doesn't understand our connection. You're the winner, Max. I choose you, your portrait. Fuck you. You're trying too hard. I know you're scared. You all have the same doe-eyed look when you wake up here, replaced by fear as you realize what's about to happen. Mr. Jefferson, why are you doing this? Oh, Max. I'm so glad you asked that question. Uh, simply put, I'm obsessed with the idea of capturing that moment innocence evolves into corruption. That shift from black to white to gray and beyond. Most models are cynical. They lose that naivete. However, some Blackwell students carry their hope and optimism with them like an aura and those lucky few become my models my subjects yes you're a psychopath and this is your last session au contraire max i'm so sane that nobody knows what's happening to you right now and don't get me started on your late partner i had enough of those faux punk sluts in my seattle days Go to hell. You will for everybody you've hurt. Unlike pure sweet Kate Marsh, I don't believe in that bullshit. She could have been my masterpiece. The world is what an artist makes it. And my muse... Blah, blah, blah. God, I hate your voice now. You might as well savor it, considering it's the last you'll hear. Oh. <laughs> that struck a nerve. Your face changed color. Beautiful. You will not get away with this. I want you to know that. When you told the principal that I made Kate cry, I thought you almost had me. It's good our esteemed Principal Wells is like most administrators. A closet drunk. I do know that the Prescotts are going to have a major scandal when the town finds out what their elite son has been doing for homework. He's as sick as you. Don't judge people, Max. But that's why Nathan never should have been at Blackwell. You didn't care about him. You're wrong again. He was genuinely talented, and his father is a serious asshole, as you might know. I know. I became a sort of father figure for Nathan. It happens often in teacher-student relationships. It was kind of touching for a while. Did you tell him everything about your plans at Blackwell? Don't be stupid, Max. I told him what he needed to hear. In return, I had access to the Prescott fortune. Who do you think paid for this glorious darkroom and equipment? How else could I get all these hip new drugs for my subjects? Rachel Amber was your victim, not your subject. Oh. Rachel Amber. That's the real tragedy. Nathan thought he could be an artist like me. Instead, the dumbass gave her an overdose. Why, Rachel? I don't have time to tell you everything. But she was special. A human chameleon, so many visual 
possibilities. We had a real connection. Did you know she also had a connection with Frank? Let's be honest. She was doing the classic bad boy thing. She was over Frank before it began. He just didn't know, anyway. Rachel is dead. But no tears. Los Angeles would have killed her anyway, so look at this as a favor. You're evil. Oh, I see. You and your friends almost beat Nathan to death. See, we're not so different. Yes, yes we are. I cared more about Nathan than you did. No, you didn't. It's just too bad that he fell in lust with Rachel. He actually thought he could mimic what I do with the camera and subject, like father, but not like son. Where is Nathan now? Dead and buried. After what he did to Rachel, I knew I couldn't keep him as a protege for much longer. Now the police will never find his body. Do you finally get it now, Max? I can't compromise my vision with amateurs. You are an amateur. Look at the trail of death you left behind. You can't blame all this on Nathan. I don't care what you do to me. You're gonna die, motherfucker. For Chloe and Rachel and everybody else. I do love your spirit, Max, but you brought yourself here by your own choice. Anyway, I like my models to be seen and not heard. So I have to make sure there's nothing left behind of you. Okay. Now, let's see how these shots came out. I can see why your instant camera is so appealing. You don't need a computer to print your work out. Alone with a heart, a battered old heart. A heart I have all those photos in my diary. This could be a way out. This okay, new dialogue. is purity personified. Okay. Wait! Please, Mr. Jefferson. Max, I would love to talk shop, but I really need to go over these pictures. Especially while they're fresh in my mind. I think our session was a career high for me. You... you still have my diary. Don't worry. Nobody's going to read it. Thanks for reminding me. There's nothing more innocent than a teenager's diary. Oh, look at your selfies. What a waste of talent. Look at that shot, Max. You can do so much better. With a heart, a battered old heart. Is this where I submit my photo for the contest? I could frame any one of you in a dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperation. Shh, shh, shh. I believe Max has taken what you kids call a selfie. A dumb I'm word back. for a wonderful photographic trick. Right back where I started Max. this insane That's week. Good. And nobody course, is going to hurt Chloe know, ever the again. The portrait has been popular since the early 1800s. Your generation was not the first to use images for selfie expression. Sorry, I couldn't resist. The point remains that the portraiture has always been a vital aspect of art and photography for as long as it's been around. Now, Max, since you've captured our interest and clearly want to join the conversation, can you please tell us the name of the process that gave birth to the first self-portraits? The Daguerrean process. Oh, well, that was easy, Max. Was it? Okay. Well, uh, okay then. So, uh, the Daguerrean process made portraiture hugely popular, mainly because it gave the subjects clear, defined features. You can learn more when you actually finish reading the assigned chapters. Obviously, Max has read them. 
And guys, don't forget the deadline to submit a photo in the Everyday time Heroes to change time. The winner to San Francisco, where you'll be feted by the First, artwork. let's make it real easy to capture Mark Jefferson. And Alyssa, get it together. Taylor, don't hide. I'm still waiting for your entry, too. And yes, Max, I see you pretending not to see me. Bastard. I have to warn David about Jefferson and the dark room. Victoria, you still have to do your homework. Even if you're submitting your photo for the competition, it won't be your last starting a photo so. I should be able to track down David's number from the school pamphlet. Found you. For once, David, I'm praying you'll overreact to this as much as everything else. And take Jefferson down fast. You have just by participating, by putting yourself out there in the world, no matter who wins. This is just a bump on a bigger road. I don't want anybody to feel You wanted me to enter the contest, asshole. So maybe I'll be going to San Francisco. And Jefferson. You'll be going to prison. The past was in the past. Am I pushing myself too hard? It do this fancy camera does not give you any extra talent, Victoria. Or excuses. You will not hurt Kate Marsh this time. Mr. Jefferson? We need to talk. Uh. Can you see I'm talking to Mr. Jefferson now? I can see you're kissing ass again. Nothing new. What did you just say? Hold on, Victoria. Are you okay, Max? Not until Victoria knows that hiding behind a screen and posting videos of people is totally fucked up. You know how easy it is to hurt somebody? To destroy their life? Are you proud of yourself? If you have any feelings left, you should think about your actions. Listen, I, I didn't. Of course you did. You're so insecure, you can't even be happy with your own talent. You have to try and bring everybody down to your mean and ugly level. Okay, I do not have to listen to this bullshit. Do I, Mr. Jefferson? Well, it looks like you already did, Victoria. Then I guess I'm done talking. I sure hope so. I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy that, but why? Here's my photograph for the Everyday Heroes contest. Oh, uh, that was easy. No, it wasn't easy at all. Well, I, uh, I, I can't prejudge yet, but I'm very happy you decided to enter. That means a lot to me and Blackwell. The first step for any artist is to put themselves out there in the world without fear. To be innocent. Or guilty. Uh, well, and thanks for the photo, and maybe both of us will be jet-setting to San Francisco this Friday. Or maybe only one of us will be going. Don't be so modest, Max. Anything can happen in a week. As you're going to find out, Mr. Jefferson.
Whoa! Okay. You're okay, Max. You're safe. On a plane. I hope I did everything right this time. Good work, David. Chloe. Oh, you're alive. Oh, you're alive. I did it. I fixed everything. Well, sir. Well, not Rachel. beginning of the end for Jefferson and the Prescotts. Two Moon Diner. Amid all the environmental chaos in Arcadia Bay, such as the unseasonal snowfall and beached whales, some residents reported seeing two full moons last night around 8 p.m. Witnesses claimed that the double moons were clear in the night sky until clouds covered them up shortly after they appeared. No cell phone or video footage has surfaced yet, which has led local meteorologists to believe that imaginations or an overdrive due to the recent eco-havoc. Then about Blackwell, acting on a series of tips from David Matson, Police officers descended Tuesday on a bizarre underground chamber, allegedly used by teacher Mark Jefferson and student Nathan Prescott, to drug, kidnap, and photograph young women. Although there were no other signs of physical or sexual assault on the victims, the disturbing revelations have sent shockwaves through the tranquil city of Arcadia Bay. Even Sean Prescott, the most powerful businessman in the area, is under investigation for his role as owner of the farmhouse where the high-tech Dark Room studio was located. So something I'm still wondering about is how did Kate manage to get out without, without being killed? It sounds to me like, like I, one of the things I was wondering is whether Jefferson is a serial killer? whether he is actually trying to kill people or not. And it sounds like maybe it's not really. Because it sounds like Rachel died from Nathan accidentally giving them an overdose. And then he was going to kill me just because I knew too much. And that's also why he killed Chloe. But they didn't kill Kate. I guess because there was no particular reason to. So I don't think he was so much interested in killing people unless it you know, served his goals of not being found out. I mean, he still has killed a bunch of people. <laughs> so, even if it happened in a different timeline, he is a serial killer. I was actually thinking about that. Nathan, which we now know, and I didn't actually know this until we just saw this, uh, apparently is the one that actually killed Rachel by accidentally giving her an overdose. But, even before that... I considered him a murderer because he killed Chloe. I know he didn't kill Chloe in this reality, this version of reality that I went with, but if you ask me, the fact that I saw him kill Chloe, and the fact that he absolutely 100% we can be certain would have killed Chloe if it wasn't for the fact that we triggered the fire alarm in that bathroom, that's essentially the same thing as being a killer. As far as I'm concerned, he murdered Chloe. so weird to be in between realities. Everything is out of focus and in the distance. Uh, nobody calls it Frisco, so please don't. We're almost in San Francisco. I'm so stressed, but I'm so excited too. Aw, I haven't seen Hot Dog Man in forever. Chloe and I used to totally play the video game and watch him all the time when we were innocent. I have to admit, I love being called an artist. 
Everyday Heroes. Please fasten your seat and stow any electronic gear until the plane is on the ground and at the gate. Thank you. We're starting our descent in a few minutes. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco with clear skies and cool 60 degrees. We hope you enjoyed your trip and we thank you very much for choosing Pacific West Air. Come fly with us anytime. Uh, I don't think so. I'm hoping these airline seats get smaller so I won't have to fly at all anymore. How did you sleep? Hope I wasn't snoring out loud, Max. Just a bit. It's been a tough week at Blackwell. So I hope you'll forgive me. Between Mr. Jefferson and Prescott's, things have been hectic, to say the least. I totally get it, Principal Wells. That's a smart way of telling me to stop whining. We are proud of you for representing Blackwell at the Everyday Heroes Contest. I know I'm not exactly the guy you wanted in San Francisco but we all want you to have a great experience here. I already am, and we're not even there. Oh, Christ. Another nosebleed? Max, you're not just screwing around with time. San Francisco is so cool, and this gallery is huge. So is the buffet. If an event skimps on the food, you know it's a bad event. As long as I don't have to eat any caviar. This is your day, Max. You can do whatever you want. I hope you take advantage of your status and talk to as many influential people here as possible. Work the room. I don't know. I feel so weird, like I'm a little kid hanging with the adults. Max. After this week, you are certainly not a little kid anymore. In fact, you're a noteworthy adult being honored by your peers. Now you have to start acting like the photographer you want to be. Hell, I wanted to be in charge of a big school someday. So I started taking charge of things when I was young. <laughs> Ask my poor classmates. Max, I'm gonna eat up that caviar so you don't have to. Uh, better get in there and start schmoozing. You know, I won't always be here to take charge. But you come talk to me whenever you want. Come on, Max. After everything that's happened, this should be the least scary thing you've ever done. Wowzer, Max. You did it. Somehow. I went from the dark room to this gallery. I've been through so many realities in one week. Life is... weird. <laughs> I forgot that little joke. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when we return, we're going to look around the Zeitgeist Gallery.